Uh, we can um, <clears throat> call the meeting to order and take attendance. Um, if you'd like to call everybody's name, this may be our last um, Zoom meeting for a while. So I don't yeah. know if that's sad or happy, but it is what it is. <laughs> um, probably not our last Zoom uh, Zoom meeting. Well, um, as but in the group, Zoom. right, Kelly? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't mean to confuse confuse the issue. Yeah. Uh, so I received notice that uh, starting in August, uh, we're going to be having public art commission meetings in person. And um, as a as a small bonus to help uh, help move that along, all the public art commission members will be getting cards to enter the Bryce Stewart Building, and they will also gain you entry to the parking deck. So you'll be able to to park uh, with the city employees, and you won't have to wander around looking looking for parking right before the meeting starts. Uh, so we'll be getting those to you uh, this month, and uh, we'll also be on the third floor of the Bright Stewart Building. We used to be on the second. Uh, since uh, last March, the planning department has moved upstairs, and uh, so that's that's where we'll be having our meetings. Uh, but I'll update you all with that in an email uh, before too long. So I'll start off with attendance. I'll just call off everybody's name, and you can just say here, uh, MD Abiel. Uh, here, however, I'll be jumping off a little early. I have a doctor's appointment. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. You. All right, cool. Uh, Cliff Dossel. Here. David Finn. Here. Dara Silver. Here. Betsy Towns. Here. Elizabeth Ripetti. Here. Owens Daniels. I didn't see Owens. Uh, Jane Dabb. Here. Jennifer Finkel. So Jennifer. Yep. There you are. I can't, we can't hear you, but you're not muted. Oh, oh there you go. Okay. Good. All right. Jennifer's here. And Jason Thiel. I didn't see Jason. Okay. All right, thank you, everybody. So, well, we should um, have a motion to approve the minutes from the June first meeting. If anybody cares to make a motion for that, having read them over, I'm sure. This is Betsy. I move to approve. Betsy moves to approve. Do I have a second? Second. And Elizabeth seconds. All in favor, you could just raise your hand. And the record shows you that. And yeah, did you raise your hand? <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, I'm raising my hand. Okay. Um, <laughs> Can you press it really hard into the screen? I, uh, I'm pressing really hard. You can't see it, though. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you, everybody. All um, right. Kelly, I'll turn it over to you to give us the um, agenda and uh, and talk more about the various things we've got on tap today. Yeah, so the first item is the Winston-Salem State University sculpture donation. Um, I don't know, Ben, is this something that you wanted to help present or Angela, are you, uh, are you presenting this solo? Um, or would you like me to kind of give a quick summary before? I would defer to Ben as I'm just sitting here taking notes on behalf of the athletic director, ATN. Okay, well, I'll be happy to present this item and then uh, Angela, you can fill in any details that I may miss. Certainly. So, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so uh, about a month or so ago, uh, Athletic Director of Home State, Etienne Thomas, reached out to me uh, uh, with, the, with an interest in the university installing a, uh, a statue of Coach Bill Hayes uh, in the first level of the uh, Bowman Gray Stadium Fieldhouse. Uh, there is a, 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 a 
some uh, alumni who are supporting uh, raising the funds uh, for the for the statue. It would be a a I guess a life size statue that would be a a permanent installation there on the first floor. Um, I believe it's a bronze statue. As many of you know, Coach Hayes was a longtime coach there at Winston-Salem State, as well as the athletic director, also coach at uh, North Carolina A&T. So uh, he's in the, I think, North Carolina Hall of Fame. Um, so just uh, the university is wanting to, to recognize him in this in this way. So uh, that's that's pretty well sums it up. Be happy to answer any questions. And. Uh... Etienne uh, shared with me uh, the website of the artist that they hope to use. Um, let me share my screen. In the chat for you as well. Uh, so this, this is, uh, you can see this is a shop that does a lot of statue, bronze statues, uh, people, and uh, other other figures. Get the idea here that, uh, and a lot of experience in this area. And um, so this would be paid for by Winston Salem State, and it would would go in the field house. Um, and it, but it would be, uh, would it be owned by the city, Ben? Um, I'll have to verify that. I mean, I think I think that an installation of that might be become you know property of the of the city, but uh, but I can I can verify that. Um, so so what we're looking for is a motion to um, to approve, to, to recommend the city council um, approve the installation of this artwork at the, in the, in the field house at Bowman Gray Stadium. It, has the site been determined? Is it in, inside, indoors? Yes, sir. It, uh, it, when you go in the front, in the main entrance there at the field house on the first level, it's going to be right there. Okay. I don't know if you call it a foyer space, but kind of right there and across from the elevator. Okay. And and what's the name of the artist? I didn't see it on the website there, Kelly. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's if it's a studio of number a number of people in the studio or uh, or if it's just uh, Matt Matt Glenn. It looks, it looks like a, an atelier with a number of different artists working for him. So um, let me ask a question about as far as the commission all we need is um, a motion to approve accepting this um, concept. We're not needing to handle anything as far as, you know, selecting an artist or his location or any of the other details that go along with a sculpture. That's, that's correct. It would just be a recommendation to the council that they um, accept this installation 
um, and then everything else would be handled by uh, Winston-Salem State and, and uh, commissioning the artist and paying for it and installing it and everything else. I think that's, this is Elizabeth Rapetti. I think that's a great idea, Jane, to leave it all up to Winston-Salem State. What sort of concerned me was the ownership of the statue after it's built. Would, would that become the property of the city or the whatever? And I do think that that is, is kind of a important detail, especially when it seems like from the application, not all the funds to make that or to create that statue have been raised. So I just I would like to protect the city and not make, you know, make sure that nobody's hand is out to the city because the city may or may not own the statue after it's made. So, I mean, I would defer to Angela as far as the status of the fundraising. I mean, not, you know, conversations with the athletic director. I mean, the, the intent is for them to, to raise 100% of the cost of the, of the statue. Um, I think they would maintain it. I, I just, I need to look back at the, uh, at the lease agreement. Usually what alterations or improvements to the field house, if the university requested, or even if they fund them, become, you know, uh, property of the city. So, uh, but, but I, I just need to, to kind of verify that. Hey, this is India. Uh, first and foremost, I think it's a wonderful idea. I had a quick question though. Can we see the final mock-up of the statue? Like, has it been, did, Kelly, did you show us that? The actual, like, final? No, there's still fundraising for, um, for the project. Okay. So, so Do, the project. Angela, Angela, can you let us know when the final um, mock-up or the final maquette that is being created, maquette, is it like a small sculpture or version that the, I guess the university would approve? Like, ha, it, do you know when that will be available? I don't have that answer at the present moment, but I am in conversation with A.D. Thomas as she is multitasking. So I was able to get you the artist, and so I'll, I'll work on that answer as well. Yeah, like if we could, I would love to see it. I mean, I think it's a wonderful idea. Um, and I would love to see the final maquette that the artist or team of artists or organization comes up with, you know? Uh, I'm also curious about whether, uh, it sounds like you've kind of landed on a group of artists, but uh, is that pretty official that those will be the artists who are making the piece? I think that the artist will be uh, Matt Glenn. And I did put that name in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm just thinking that Winston-Salem State has such a remarkable collection of, of art in digs and also public art that um, I just wanted to know who the artist was too to think about that a little bit more. Um, it, is, it is such a significant amount of money and such an exciting project that um, it seems like it would be valuable to have somebody who, who whose artistry also um, match that quality of work already in the university collection. And, yeah, and to Bessie's point real quick, and this is just a thought and I could be totally wrong, but I know sometimes we get pushback from artists in the city, especially when it's a city approved project that the artist in the city never had an opportunity to bid on it or to submit work for it or anything. And so that's just something we may wanna consider just because when city council approves a commission, a lot of times the local artists are like, wait a minute, like why didn't we get an opportunity to even submit an application to be a part of that commission? Now it's one thing if Winston-Salem State decides to do this on your own without any kind of city involvement whatsoever, but when the city is involved in it, that's one of the big pushbacks we do get from artists when they haven't had an opportunity to even apply for the opportunity to do the sculpture. That's, so that's something we probably want to discuss further and consider.
Well, it sounds like there are a couple of issues that are a little bit complicating, just maybe a straight up or down vote right now. One thing is the ownership, and I get that, and that seems like it's a little bit fuzzy. Um, so, and 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 it's probably the situation in which the the commission and the artists are all and and the donations are all packaged into one sort of deal because they are pri they are basically private uh, donations. Is that right, Angela? Yes. Thank you for asking. Where this is a gift um, that will be unfolding, further discussion would need to be happening with the city to find out who actually will be owning it. So that answer is not yet determined as per um, conversation with AD Thomas and definitely based upon the response of Ben Rao. So there will be some further discussion as to determine who that ownership would be, but it is a gift. Thanks, Angela. And yes, funding would uh, come from um, formal WSSU football players as well as the WSSU alumni. So this is a case in which we have basically a private group of people wishing to put a, play, uh, a statue in a city on a city property place. So it's something that we haven't done a lot with. Um, and uh, you know, but on the other hand, I would say also that it's not particularly controversial. Maybe, maybe the choosing of the artist is, but I think that it makes a lot of sense to have a statue of a coach in a in a foyer of of this, you know, athletic facility. And uh, you know, while we may desire to have um, like an open call for the artists, I think when you have private uh, private group that's raised that much money um, for what is not exact it's it seems like it's public private sort of, sort of you know somewhat both I mean I I'm kind of wrestling with the with the idea here myself uh, I, I believe you know the the stadium is leased by Winston Salem State it's you know it's owned by the city but it's not as if you know, it's just, a, you know, a random citizen wishing to put, you know, a sculpture of, you know, their favorite person in a, you know, in their neighborhood park. It's, you know, it's a long, long time relationship between these institutions and they're, yeah. you know, yeah. they're, they're rent, renting this, renting this space and, you know, the, Sculpture will be there for a long time, uh, you know, be, because of that relationship. What would happen, for example, if um, Winston-Salem State built a new stadium? Um, I bet you they would want to take the statue away from the facility and put it in a new place. Or, I mean, I can foresee situations in which the statue, you know, the ownership of the statue would become important. So I think that should be resolved. Not that we really may, we may not really care very much one way or another, but it probably should be established. Um, yeah, I can, I can look into that and, 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 and provide uh, the commission with, a, with some clarification on that. Um, if, if, if you all would like to hold this until August, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that you have all that information by the end. I think it's a great project. I, I, I won't see any big, big hold up with it. It's just that this one little, one little detail. Sorry, I think, I think that, I mean, I'm seeing some heads nodding about that and just, Maybe it's just one of those technicalities. I hate to say, but we are the we are the technicality group here. <laughs> I was I was just going to add real quick, David. Also, and this is just something to consider. The Diggs Gallery has an amazing collection of public art already, and so if they're thinking about someone to maintain or or um, 
look after or even, you know, uh, I guess own in many ways, that could be a wonderful suggestion in terms of who owns the peas once it's placed on city property. That way, that's where the city doesn't have to worry about the maintenance of it, the care of it, the overseeing of it, because the university already has an amazing sculpture ga a garden, you know, so that could be, you know, maintained. You know, so that's something to think about in terms of who's the best person who's close enough to make sure that the piece stays well maintained and preserved. That is a great point. I think it's it would be really good to have uh, that connection with from from the athletics with uh, the Diggs Gallery as well. Maybe something for you guys to think about, just so that. I mean, we had a situation at Wake Forest where we had uh, some glasses, I guess, broke off a statue over it over at Bowman Gray, remember that? Um, and uh, we had to get those replaced. Anyway, it takes, uh, it, you never know what's gonna happen to statues, even though they seem really permanent. So we can get some additional information. I'm looking at the lease right now and, and there's a section on modifications to the stadium and field house and it says that Winston Salem State University may also, from time to time, in its sole discretion and its own expense, install machinery, equipment, and other tangible property in or on the field house. All such machinery, equipment, and other tangible property shall remain the sole property of WSSU, in which neither the city nor any assignee of the city shall have any interest. And it talks about if, if it's removed, that that might uh, you know cause some. It, you know, you had to work through that, but. Uh, and I believe that that AD uh, Thomas did tell me that the university would be responsible for maintaining the statue as well. Well, just, it seems like the sculpture would just end up being um, not necessarily anything that would convey at the end of any lease relationship, much like a uh, you know, painting that you'd have on the wall. You just um, move the artwork out and relocate it. Um, if, I mean, if that's the case, um, would you all, would that be, uh, acceptable to, to the commission if Winston-Salem State owns the, owns the sculpture and, you know, they're responsible for its maintenance? Would, are there any other issues? Um, and if that's not the case, we could bring it back to, in August. That that seems like the cleanest relationship, in my in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Does that does that work for you, Ben? Yes, we will certainly bring back whatever information that the commission needs. But if the but if. Um, we're assuming that Winston-Salem State own, will continue to own the sculpture and they're responsible for maintenance. It sounds like the commission could approve it today. Yep. And then um, if that, if we find out that's not the case, we could bring it back in August. But if that is the case, and it sounds sounds like it from what, what, you've, what you've read in the lease, then we could, you know, could we kind of clear it, clear it from the agenda. I think I think that would work, uh, Kelly. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll confirm this language with the, with the uh, city attorney's office, but it seems to me that you know our work would probably fall under the term tangible property, and uh, so that would remain property of the university. But uh, so yes, I mean, if, if uh, I get a different interpretation, then we could we could bring bring this back. Okay. If I may ask a question on behalf of um, Ad Thomas, was there a need for clarity on the? Artist or the answer that she provided, Matt Glenn is the artist. Is that still up for questions um, or some revisiting and reconsideration as I did take note from um, Ms. Beal with regards to the city and um, providing opening opportunities for other artists? Well, I guess, I guess just for me, this is India again. Um, I was just, I mean, you kind of, it's, it's a gift, so I guess it's a little different than um, like an open call. It's private, like like David said, it's public and private. And yes. so it's a gift. So I guess it, it doesn't, 
you know, ideally you would want to have local artists involved and an opportunity to, you know, because we all have been impacted by Coach mm -hmm. Gaines and all the amazing things that he's done, you know. And so I think it would have been wonderful to have a local artist be able to to create it or to be a part of the selection process. But if it's a gift, I don't necessarily see why that why that's necessary. That's just me personally. I do, however, would love to see the piece. You know, like even if it's just a maquette or a mock-up or some kind of, you know, sketch or something, I would love to see it, you know, um, before if possible. Absolutely. So as I continue to um, partner with um, Ben Rao, we can certainly provide um, some inf more information as uh, we reconvene in August. Um, and A.D. Thomas will certainly be in place as well. Well, I, I'm going to move that we make a contingent, uh, uh, make a, an approval contingent on on the ownership of being retained by Winston-Salem State University. Um, and I think that would help um, Ben and Angela move forward, um, you know, and, and we would be, be very interested in seeing it, seeing what it's going to look like and, uh, and knowing for sure about the ownership. So that's the, I, I uh, make that motion for for contingent approval. Second. Do I have a, a vote in, in all in favor? Raise hands. Oh, aye. 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 Have you got that, Kelly? Sarah and India were, had their screens off and I heard them both say aye. So we have a unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, so the next item is uh, the Salem Parkway Bridge Art and we have uh, several guests here. We have Jeff Fansler from Winston-Salem DOT, um, Kimberly Barb, and Tim. Um, I'll let you pronounce your name, Tim Guadagno. And, uh, and also some representatives from Creative Corridors, uh, Greg Arrett, Milton Rhodes, and Cheryl Harry. So I'm um, going to give the floor to Jeff to do a short presentation of um, some research um, that Stimmel has done on different locations for these sculptures along Salem Parkway and different, different limitations um, and opportunities there. So, Jeff, do you have screen sharing ability? I do. Can everyone hear me okay? Let's start there. Good? Thumbs up? Great. So, Kelly, um, I think I have screen sharing. Is it okay to go ahead and start that now? Yes. All right, let me see if I can get this to work. Let's see. You all should be seeing that. Now, is that affirmative? Yes, so it's good. Very good. All right, great. Well, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Jeff Banzer. I'm with Winston Southern Department of Transportation. And as Kelly mentioned, this item is to uh, present what is a very exciting project in regards to the artwork of the Business 40 project. So let me provide, just take two minutes and provide a little context, and then I'll get into the presentation if that's okay. Um, as a part of the 2018 bond referendum, the, uh, of course, citizens voted to approve uh, a portion of that to fund uh, betterments or enhancements, we're calling it, to the Business 40 corridor. A big part of those enhancements are uh, public art and in the form of monument structures uh, along the corridor, particularly on the bridges. And that is what this item will present today is how we, what are we are proposing moving forward with public art structures uh, throughout the corridor. And what I, what I will define as the limits of essentially Church Street to Peters Creek Parkway are what we are considering the bookends 
for this particular piece of the enhancement project. Now, in full transparency, it is part of a much larger project with landscaping, lighting, a lot of other elements that are, 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 are added to this artwork. But again, for this uh, particular piece, we're looking at uh, Peter Street Parkway to Church Street. So as you heard Kelly mention, we did we are partnering with Stemmel. We're very excited about their work. They've been a part of the business 40 corridor enhancements and the master planning and a lot of efforts that have gone on with the design elements for many years. And so they're familiar with the corridor, they're familiar with the project. And so we're excited to be teaming with Stemmel and their folks to, uh, to get us started off right. So that's a little backstory on where we are today. What I'll present today is essentially where we are to date with uh, coming up with a footprint and uh, kind of uh, the groundwork of, of what we plan to do moving forward with, regard, with regards to these structures. And then what we'll be looking for from the commission is um, basically approval of where we are today and then some discussion about how we plan to move forward. I imagine that after my presentation, there will be more questions than answers, but I promise you that is what this meeting is about. Um, we, we plan to take good notes and then we'll be in touch with Kelly. Kelly, I, I imagine we'll, we'll be issuing some, some, you know, uh, some answers uh, throughout the coming weeks, uh, uh, hopefully in anticipation of bringing this back to you a couple more times as we get farther down the road. So that is what, what I'm gonna do. So if you'll let me, I'll just dive right in <clears throat> to the, the brief presentation. And then maybe if you don't mind, jot your questions down and then we can, we can have a little discussion period at the very end. If you guys will let me labor through this, I promise I talk fast, I have a lot of words, but I'll do my best to, to tone it down and uh, hopefully we can get through it together. So I appreciate all of your time, we'll get right into it. So what you see on your screen now is just a, a, an, air, a, an image, a map that was created by Stemwell of the corridor that highlights uh, the bridges, uh, particularly along the corridor and, and the, the footprint that I mentioned earlier. So what you see here is just an overview of the project limits. Uh, I mentioned the Church Street bid, Bridge to the east and the Peters Creek Bridge to the west that we are uh, calling the bookends of this enhancement project. So with that, we are recommending uh, artwork at a number of these bridges. So I mentioned the 2018 bond referendum is, a, is the funding source for this project. And there are significant dollars uh, allocated for this, uh, these betterments and these art sculptures that will be planned for this corridor. So with that, we all have been working and discussing with Kelly, with our, with our uh, design team, with Stemmel about how to maximize those, those dollars. What we didn't want to do was over promise and under deliver. You know, we thought at first, you know, we just put artwork everywhere. And then with the available funding, does that really scale back the size and scale of what we can do, trying to think about, you know, these need to be visible from the corridor as you pass at 55 miles an hour underneath it. So that's an element of design consideration that we have been wrestling with of how much and how intense do we do, maximizing our dollars and also thinking about where the most impact is, the visual impact from the corridor. So notice highlighted on the screen, we have three bridges that, that staff is recommending, and this is where I think we will have discussion moving forward. I do highlight each bridge. In the next uh, few slides that uh, precede this, I'll go over each bridge and just a real brief summary, and uh, we'll, we'll kind of come back to this slide where, again, we're gonna recommend these three locations. So three locations that staff is recommending for enhancements in the form of art structures and artwork is Church Street. Again, it was designed that way, and I'll get into that a little bit more. It is a bridge that has been shown through all the renderings, creative corridors, through all the presentations, through early design development, uh, shown to have artwork on Church Street. As you travel to the west, you'll see Marshall Street is the next bridge that we have highlighted. Okay, Marshall Street is a one-way course street, and we're proposing the structures only on the east side of that bridge, and there are some design restrictions and really some constraints on the west side of the bridge that would make putting art difficult on the west side. So Marshall Street is bridge number two. And of course, the, the, uh, the other book end that we're calling of the project, Peach Street Parkway, it is the biggest. It is the, 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 the actual formal interchange for this corridor. It is uh, the one that we have shown uh, all along in some early renderings from several, several years ago to have artwork monument structures on all four corners of the bridge. And as a, as a bridge that we really want to highlight given all the amenities that are around it and that and the, really the bookend of the project. So those are the three bridge structures that we are proposing to date. 
And uh, now I'll get into, we'll just run through them real quick. I'll do my best to make this as painless as, pro as possible. Just bear with me. So starting from the east, Church Street, I did mention that is the first bridge we are proposing. Now, I think Stimmel's done a good job of, of highlighting some renderings. I hope you all can see that very well. Um, notice that the renderings that have been shown uh, numerous times through several presentations uh, throughout the life of the Business 40 project, what they have done is they've inlaid the uh, streetlights. I mentioned street lighting is a part of our enhancement project, and they are, are, are going to follow suit of our, pre, our you know, recently adopted downtown master streetscape master plan. And so we have a plan that has already been approved by city council that highlights what type of downtown uh, streetlight fixtures will be used on downtown streets. And of course they'll apply to these downtown streets and such as Church Street. But notice the monument in the middle. This is where we are proposing and this, this, this segment here, we are proposing uh, artwork. Um, the bridge is designed that way. They have the foundations there and we will be looking to uh, to put some type of art structure on these foundations. It is both sides. I think there's a picture here of both sides. You can see them highlighted here. I do hope you can see my cursor as I tend to talk with my mouth more than my, my words sometimes, but just bear with me. So you see these monuments here that do break up the handrails on the bridge and it's designed for the, to, to house the uh, art structure that will be, that we are proposing at these locations. So of course they, they need and what we are, are hoping they would complement the street lighting. City DOT has significant, significant requests to really move forward with the street lighting. And uh, we're passionate about it. We've had a number of requests for that. And of course, you guys have seen these knuckles. They are the foundations for that will house the, uh, the street lights. They are already installed today. And so the, the, the artwork will uh, enhance that to, to some degree. So, but again, it will need to be coordinated look and feel, fit, finish with the, the street lights that are planned for there. So um, I'm not gonna go through all the notes. You can see some of the pictures. What the consultant did was go through and take some, some photos of, of the corner, different corners of the bridge, just to kind of orient yourself. And after this, I'm happy to share this presentation as it's needed. Otherwise, we'll never get through it. So bear with me and I'll, uh, I'll go on to the next, uh, next bridge. So traveling to the west, the next bridge you come to is Main Street. This is one we are not proposing. Uh, any uh, any artwork on right now? You do one thing. I think that was uh, was the, the consultant did do was they did do some ground truthing at each bridge, and they did highlight some potential locations of where artwork could be. Now, one caveat is I did mention we're trying to maximize our dollars, and what we don't want, I think, and this is something that we'll certainly why we're here is to understand you know, how much we can get for our dollars. Do we want several? You know, many more that may be much smaller in scale or do we really focus on the, the bridges that staff is recommending and maybe make them at a scale big enough that's really impactful to the community. So that's what city DOT, city staff is wrestling with and what I think we're looking to you guys to, to come behind us and maybe offer some guidance as we work to issue an RFP to get some artists in here to help us with that. So I won't go through uh, again, all of the, uh, the kind of the notes that we have here but again, one thing I will call your attention to is the little Liberty Main, you see Liberty Street Bridge right here, just west of Main Street. These, these areas between these that, you know, there are some remnants of right of way and, and, and land that was bought with the Business 40 project. And there's still some change of hands taking place on who will ultimately own and maintain this land around here. So it's not only the fact of, of you know, trying to, to really be strategic in where we place these, there's also an issue of, um, land ownership, and we're working through some of those details in this area as well. So moving on to Liberty Street, again, this is another bridge where we have uh, not recommended anything. And so for a little bit different reason on this particular Liberty Street bridge is you uh, you all are, are likely aware of the efforts and initiatives that uh, Creative Corridor is really spearhead, spearheading in regard to the Peter Oliver uh, park and memorial that will uh, will take place just west of Liberty Street there in relation to the Muse uh, building that is city, city now owns and and of course all of that's going on here with the, the strollway bridge the strollway alignment path and of course the MUP bridge that is still designed planned for getting ready to, to try to push a, a construction project out to build that bridge so there's a lot just planned for this area and I'm trying to understand how much can we really cram in there and not take away from all the nice amenities that are already there. So again, nothing recommended at this time for Liberty Street. 
Uh, the same is true for Cherry. Uh, I'll, I'll jump over to Marshall Street. Cherry and Marshall is a, another one-way pair, and Marshall Street was the one we landed on. Notice here, again, another rendering of the streetlights. Uh, we are proposing uh, our structures on the east side of Marshall Street, uh, basically here and here, um, again, to complement the, the streetlights that will be proposed on each bridge, that will be installed on each bridge. But again, just on the eastern side of the bridge, a couple reasons for that. Um, uh, we do have a potential, you know, I think there's some design challenges to get one in on the southwest corner. But on the northwest corner, there are just really, uh, this, this corner here, you can see, it's just not a lot of room with guardrail with some embankment issues and the bridge above and everything just challenging to kind of get some art structures in there. But again, a little bit more opportunity. You notice here, this is the southeast corner. And then again, the northeast corner there, the flat house out there today, just doing some ground truthing as well. That to uh, some possible, you know, that somewhere in this vicinity would be where uh, just beyond the guardrail, there's an area where we could get some structure in there. And those two, so southeast and again, northeast are the two that we are calling for on the Marshall Street Bridge of where we could potentially get these uh, these structures to go into. So again, to complement, uh, you know, we, we also like because the MUP alignment does pass through on the south side of Southern Parkway right here at Marshall Street. Again, we can, we can not only complement the, the traveling public on, on the parkway, but again, the pedestrian traffic that would utilize the MEP, maybe have some dual purpose there as well. So the, the, again, another reason why we chose the, the eastern side of the bridge. So moving on um, to, uh, I went the wrong way. We'll go continue headed to the west. Broad Street is the next bridge that you'll come to. And again, this is not one we have recommended. However, again, notice that there are some potential locations here uh, as well. Again, what staff is trying to do is, is present enough, enough bridges that we can get a large enough structure in that can really can be visually um, appealing to the traveling public. But one thing I will note is this area here also is a right-of-way remnant uh, from the Business 40 project. And uh, it will also house the multi-use path spoke. You can kind of see it off the screen, but there's park-like amenities and stuff planned. And of course, there have been other requests for this area um, of, of this, basically the old ramp, the house, the old ramp of the Broad Street ramp used to come off right there and you could go right into the ballpark. That, of course, all that dynamic and interchange has been reworked with the project, but it, it is a remnant. Again, we're still in the change of hands process, so it's not, it's not formally the city's yet. And so we do not typically own this area here. But again, uh, why we're here is that to, to what staff is presenting is not recommended at Broad Street, but of course open to that discussion. And lastly, uh, and where I think uh, staff is, is, is really considering uh, probably where we spend the most of our dollars would be on the Peter Street Parkway Bridge. Um, I did mention that this is a pro project that has a lot of other pieces. Uh, one of the other pieces of our enhancement project is also another uh, transparent noise wall on the uh, eastern side of the bridge. You all have seen the green transparent noise wall on the western side, and uh, this would also be on the eastern side. Notice this is a rendering that was presented with the early presentation that was worked on with the business 40 enhancement project. Notice the structures on all four corners. Um, you know, of course, this is just a rendering and then not what we are technically, you know, set in stone, but just the idea of what we had in mind moving forward, which was some type of monument structure on all four quadrants of the bridge. And I think the intent of, of what we had in mind was to be consistent with what we have shown move to this state and have uh, really enhancements on this bridge. So of course you notice here we are recommending uh, all four corners as we've shown many times in the past. Uh, and so this will be a, something the, the most impactful and probably the largest scale project per bridge, given that it's on all four corners. So I did mention that this will be quick and fast. I've still said a lot of work for about 15 minutes. And uh, I, I imagine that there are more questions than uh, I will have answers for what I've committed to uh, staff to Stemmel is to take good notes. And uh, if you would be so kind to let us digest your questions, if we don't have the formal response today, we can certainly do our best. We'll work with our consultants who are, are Johnny on the spot and get you a response as quickly as we can. So uh, with that, Kelly, um, I did mention that I think what we're looking for today to get our consultants some direction, and maybe Kimberly, correct me if I misspeak, 
um, is to, to, we would like to pursue the three recommended bridges and then the type of structures, the artists, all of that stuff that would go into a formal RFP to, to recruit good artists, I think is still open-ended. We have some discussion still to do. We're not quite there yet, but again, it's subject to our discussion today. So I, I, I want to just give Kimberly a second to say, did I miss anything? And is there something that outside of today that you would think needs to be addressed? I think you did a great job, Jeff, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're really excited about this. I think the key things that we'll take away from this are what um, each bridge building load can handle, where where the uh, infrastructure is. So we'll kind of get that information put together, some of the underground elements that are in place, and then also to let the, the um, commission know that uplighting is a part of this and, and certainly landscape enhancements, all of that will go in, in part with whatever the art is chosen to be. So I think that's it. Thank you, Kimberly. Kelly, I'll turn it over to you to add as, you know, we've had a lot of discussions and if I miss anything or, or maybe direction you see this going, I appreciate you letting me give that run that. Thanks, Jeff and Kimberly. Um, so and just to just to repeat what Jeff was saying, we we're hoping to narrow narrow this down to um, locations for artwork that we could put in RFP. Um, you know, these all of, all of these looked good because of their proximity to the new multi-use path, which will be the walking and biking biking pathway, um, as well as bookending the corridor. Um, and then for Church Street, the artwork would be able to be directly on the bridge uh, because it would be over, over those, those structures that, that go uh, vertically underneath those, um, those bases. Um, and for the other two bridges, for Marshall and Peters Creek, uh, it, would have, it wouldn't be able to be located directly on the bridge. Is that... Is that correct, Jeff and Kimberly? These would, these would be just off the bridge. No, uh, that's correct. And, and, and that's all pending some great, you know, utility design and overhead utility restraints. Absolutely. And you've probably been hearing a lot about uh, materials costs going up um, for our um, sculpture that we're putting on the corner of 4th and Spruce Street. We're certainly running into that. You'll hear more about that a little bit later this, this meeting. Uh, but the, the price of steel has, has gone up. Um, and we just want to, uh, you know, not clutter up the highway with uh, sculptures on every, every bridge. Um, and then um, also give enough of a budget for each each bridge so that you could have have significant artwork on it. Um, so um, that's the that's the other information I wanted to to make sure you heard, and we're all here to answer questions. This is Elizabeth Repetti. the The only question I have is on the on the rendering that's currently on the screen is is that part of Marshall Street bridge visible for very long when you're driving under it or does the Cherry Street bridge get in the way it it seems like when you looked at the Marshall Street rendering that maybe you were really looking at the Cherry Street rendering See, see that thing? I mean, what's that? Isn't the, see when you've got bridge rendering, isn't that? And if the sculpture is supposed to be on, on the side of Marshall Street on the, I guess that's east side of Marshall Street, it isn't, aren't you really looking at Cherry Street there? But that's a great point and question. One thing that we're still doing is just, is ground truthing each one of these. So, um, 
we can certainly, and I'm, I'm taking that note to see visibility and, and what that would do. What you're seeing here is just a rendering of what this would be. It does appear to be the Cherry Street Bridge, and uh, they're both very similar in size and scale because of their proximity. But I think you bring up a great point, and we'll certainly consider that. Thank you. Uh, um, let me Hi, jump, yeah. jump in. Tim Gudagno with Spinnel. Go ahead, Tim. Are you guys able to hear Tim? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think what the rendering we are looking at, that is the Marshall Street, but I think the rendering is from the west side looking east because the MUP path is still shown there on the, on the right, which is the south side. So that, that would be the bridge, that would be the lights that you're seeing, the layout you're seeing. It just would be on the opposite. It may, it may in fact block the view, but but another another viewpoint is going to be you can see that on the on the map on the upper right corner, you can see the multi-use path MUP there. So, um, you know, one sculpture would be very close to that, um, and it might be a reason to you know to to add in this other possible possible sculpture so that you could have it viewed from the roadway. Um, that would be visible in this in this rendering here. So it could be three, you know, three sculptures on Marshall Street if if that seemed like a better solution. This is David. Um, I guess to I hope you're not mad at me for saying this, but um, from the very beginning of this project, I have wondered about art at 55 or 60 miles an hour. And it seems like all of this work, and Elizabeth brought up just probably the worst case scenario, is when you, you can't even see the bridges because you're going it fast, so fast and I really wonder about sort of the philosophical underpinning of, of putting the art in places where it's really oriented towards the highway and not towards other things that are happening in the corridor. So um, the other thing that I will say about this that's also a little bit disturbing to me is that I think that, that some of these decisions that we're talking about should be made by people, um, artists actually, not necessarily um, anyone else. So I'm, 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 I know that, for instance, the Peters Creek Parkway Way Bridge was at the very beginning was earmarked for these for the sculptures, but it's a humongous bridge, and it it you know these are going to have to be very large pieces for it in order to the to work scale wise for it. The scale of everything that has to happen at this at, on the highway is really, really large, and I, I don't know if we have considered the multi-use path enough in this. Everything seems oriented toward the highway, and I, I guess I, I just I would like to have some thought about that rather than just going with the original some some of the original ideas that people had who who plopped down sort of art along this, along the highway. So um, I'd like to hear what other people in the commission have to say about this or, um, and feel free to address my points. Um, I, I agree, David. I almost think that it's, you know, it'd be a very useful exercise for this commission to do like a walking, driving, um, Poor to really understand the scale. I mean, when I look at the Church Street and you're and you're talking about two sculptures opposite each other with all of the lighting, it becomes it seems like a lot of like visual sort of noise and a lot of verticality. Um, and so, like, I wonder, well, how high are those street lamps, and is it going to compete? Um, is it going to make an impact? Um, so I. I think we have to like consider all the vantage points um, as well. 
And, and um, is sculpture definitely, um, with at least these three bridges, you know, have, have has lighting been on the table at all in discussion with the bridges or is it like these three bridges have been identified for sculpture? Like interesting lighting. Yeah, that's, that's one of my questions too, is, uh, is about the cost of the lighting. Is that on the same line, uh, budget line as the artwork, as, as a one package deal? Or is that on a separate line item, separate from uh, what we'd be paying the artist to make the pieces? That's a great question to suggest, and it would be a separate separate item. I just want to address uh, one of David's concerns about not addressing the MUP and the sculpture. Um, you know, just I'd like to point out, you know, the Green Street Bridge is a pedestrian bridge that was artfully done. The um, the Strollway Bridge, you know, obviously with all this landscaping and trees and everything, also artfully done. Creative Corridors is going to be. Um, filling in that area with, um, you know, the Peter Oliver work. Um, so, so a lot of a lot of the multi-use path the artwork is is aimed at the multi-use path, um, and then you know these sculptures could could be could be placed. Uh, you know, if you disagree with with these locations, could you know certainly reconcentrate them in a, in a way that addresses the multi-use path. It's just something to think about. I'm intrigued by what people have said about, uh, about lighting as a uh, possibility here, like artistic lighting, uh, in addition to the uh, aesthetically kind of polite and upscale lighting that is uh, proposed so far. Um, and the reason I say that is, I think what I'm hearing too from, from Jennifer, that it's a possibility to, to transform the space a little bit more than a kind of um, a sculptural monument uh, might be able to do at that speed. And um, I, I think that Stemmel has done a great job figuring out which spaces are gonna be the most visible from the highway but I don't, I'm really curious about what possibilities exist in terms of enhancing the meaning of those spaces and creating something that, um, like in, in the renderings, and I know that they're just renderings, it looks like an, a lovely thing is placed on top of those sites, but it doesn't really have anything to do with the meaning of Peters Creek, for example, or Marshall Street. It doesn't have anything to do with Winston-Salem as a location and questions that we are grappling with as a city um, and engaged with as a city. So it, it does feel like with one of the largest public art, with maybe the largest public art budget that we have ever um, had access to, it would be really important to do more than make the city look prettier. And I'm thinking about the, all the work that Creative Corners has done to dig into the history of spaces and to ask questions about, yes, how to make a green, artful, iconic network, but also how to honor what makes this a unique place and to honor the people of the place and the, you know, the struggles and, um, and challenges and um, the layers of history that exist that, that we don't necessarily know about. Um, so it feels to me like there's an opportunity to do something more than create something prettier than what exists. I would um, like to pick up on what um, the chair said in regard to scale. And I think that's particularly important. And I've thought about that as well. And I think if you think about it, like if you were to face like, um, if you were to put like the head of a lion or something that is a statuesque type of art piece on the on the thing, it would have to be pretty massive on Peters Creek Parkway in order for it to have any impact. And so when Jeffrey talked about betterments or improvements to the bridge, my 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 is my initial thought was not.
Calaris worked really well on the pedestrian spans. And I think it would have a way of transcending the concerns about scale. And it would also have meaning to the passerby, whether it be pedestrian or vehicular, even below. And so my personal sense is to look at artistry almost like if you look at, um, even if it were a simple LED lighting treatment that outlined the actual bridge itself from side to side, those to me may seem um, not very artistic to many, but I think it would have a much larger impact that would be, um, that would make them stand out. And I think would would meet our, our goal. And if we were to fall back to a traditional art piece, I just don't think it would work on Peters Creek Parkway. You're, the cars going below and on it are just traveling too fast to take any notice. And the pedestrians are just so overwhelmed with the environment that I don't think it's a place where you can actually enjoy public art. And I really, so I, I just, I would, I would urge that that's how we would get through scale is through, my first choice would be through lighting, but I'm open to other ideas. I think, uh, I think Jason, I think you'd be able to bring up a good point in that um, with the issues of scale um, and lighting. And one of the other things that we need to consider too is that Winston-Salem is the city of arts and innovation. And I think that would be one of the ways of bringing in uh, that aspect uh, of Winston-Salem um, is through lighting and through um, technology-based um, in installations. I can see where lighting could be very uh, effective at night. I don't know how that would be during the day. Um, you would actually be eliminating a lot of art pleasure, hopefully, for other individuals who are traveling through the corridor during daylight hours. So it may be something we think of a combination of things. If there's positions along the way that would work for a larger piece, that could be seen. It might be worth thinking about. Um, I know I, I enjoy the lighting on 52 uh, with the, the bridge overpass there. But once again, I only see it in the evenings that I'm coming back from somewhere or going to somewhere. So um, just a thought, <laughs> because I don't think lighting is the whole answer here. No, I think... Um, um particularly with Church Street as a street where you could argue that, initially you could argue that it doesn't have enough vehicular traffic to warrant putting something on it, that it's probably the least traveled bridge in the spans across the road. Jeffrey, I may be wrong about that, but it's probably gotta be one of the, it's, it's the least connected road uh, bridge. And, but that would actually make the most sense to put something that is uh, statuesque if, or something that's a, a permanent piece of art rather than lighting. But I just think that the, uh, when, when they showed Peters Creek Parkway, it's just, it's hopeless to try to get, you capture someone's attention for very long in an artistic sense. And so I just think if you want to use that, um, but I do like the idea of doing different things rather than lighting all around. I think you're right, Jane, it does um, minimize daytime impact. You're right. I'd like to go back and address sort of the um, multi-use pathway and the idea of having scale, a different different series of scales for these projects. I like, I'm fine with big scale, big lighting scale, but uh, how about pedestrian scale uh, and working with some pedestrian scale for some of these pieces. Um, this would give us an opportunity also maybe to connect better with place and with some of the, the potential for creating meaning along the corridor. That's not necessarily gonna be um, available to uh, automobiles, but it would be to people who are walking or uh, doing whatever they do on the pathway. And another idea that just occurred to me that 
I mean, if we are into showing art at 55, I think billboards, I don't know if anybody's considered using large, larger structures that have LED um, or different components to them that would be able to show artwork that way. Um, uh, I know it'd be one direction only probably, but um, since there is room on the side of the road, I think we need to have something more than just sculptures on bridges um, for this. I think we need to open that up. Are you saying that we can decide would the staff and would the grand dollars be available to repurposing some of the bridge art to the multi-use path? Is that what you what you're because that doesn't sound like a bad idea. I would hope so. Uh, I don't know. Jeff, does that does that meet the uh, meet the, the the grants needs? If we, I mean, you know, the multi-use path is intersects with with bridges, no matter what. So, I mean, you could you could have sculpture at, at each you know, all along the multi-use path that intersects with bridge. So I, I knew this was going to come back to me. I don't know that I can answer that perfectly, but let me take a stab at it. I think the idea is, and that's why we're here, right, to have this discussion. Um, I'm certainly not an artist, and I appreciate all of your vantage points. So I think one thing to consider, um, locations where we could do both and maximize our dollars. I don't think, you know, the city has a multi-use path project in two phases that we're going to build. And the exact alignment and the, all the needs of the multi-use multi pass aren't yet determined. And I'd hate to consider something and go this route and have it not fit the needs of the multi-use path or really get the benefit of what we're trying to do. So I think there's a lot of unanswered questions when it comes to multi-use path. The yeah, general alignment does, even as it's shown, even as on this rendering, it's, it's pretty consistent to what it will be. But I think what we can do is to, is to consider the multi-use path and then complement that to the fullest extent we can. I, I would be hesitant to say that the use of these funds could be applied to just anywhere along the multi-use path. I think that is not the intent of what we're trying to do. One comment I will make too, my understanding is the way this was scoped many years ago, um, and the overall idea was to, to, it's kind of twofold. One being, as we talked about today, is, is, is its vantage point from the surface street, um, but also in capturing our downtown area from a vehicle as they kind of pass. I mean, you know, we're, I don't want to lose sight of that we're one of the few cities in the state, and even this part of the country that has the major a facility like this that passes right through its downtown. And there's a lot of vehicular traffic that pass through Winston-Salem and their only way to view Winston-Salem is from the parkway. And I don't want to, to lose sight of that as well. That's just my, uh, that's just speaking certainly, but I think there's a lot of, I, I don't want to abandon ship altogether because I think we may, we may lose a lot of what the intent was, at least in its early stages as, as we were scoping all this out, what we were told. So just my comments. I don't know if I answered it or, or gave you more questions than you had started with. Greg, you have your hand up. Mr. Chairman, if, if I can uh, make a few comments uh, as a, a non-commissioned commissioner member um, and one of the participants today. Um, a couple things that come to mind is, <clears throat> pardon me, um, as far as visibility, I agree that, you know, having large structures on the bridges themselves, most of the traffic that are going to be on um, Salem Parkway are not going to be able to see the structures adequately and really enjoy whatever is created for those uh, large pieces unless you have enough distance to be able to, to see it coming toward you and, and fix your eyes on it. So my thought was that there's a couple places where um, art could be placed that's not on the bridges per se, but it would be uh, approaching the corridor, uh, one being the parking lot for um, technology way, there was, used to be like a, a structure there that I think it sort of announced that it was the downtown research park, if I'm not mistaken. It was in the parking lot on the north side of Salem Parkway. 
as you're coming from 52 going toward Main Street. <clears throat> There's a highly visible area there that um, I think it's right next to the highway. It's, you know, as you're approaching the downtown area coming from the east, I think that would be a great location to have something that sort of uh, denotes that uh, you're coming into a, a really special area and having a signature piece of art there, I think would be possibly really cool. Uh, another location would be uh, on Peters Creek Parkway itself, as you're approaching Salem Parkway, as you're coming up from, uh, from the south, from Interstate 40, a lot of folks that are gonna be visiting into the downtown area or coming from adjoining areas are gonna come up Peters Creek. And there would be, a, I think, a couple opportunities there that you could develop a piece of art or a structure of some sort around the interchange, but not necessarily right on the bridge itself and have, a, a, again, a visual impact, a major visual impact. And the third place I thought, and I think uh, Milton may have talked about this in the past, was the high street offering. <clears throat> if you're going eastbound, there's a fairly large grassy area there that uh, is reasonably visible and I think would also be a, uh, an interesting place to possibly have something creative and, and enjoyable there. So those are three spots I think that that I think it would be maybe easier to have something maybe a little bit larger scale that could be visible from the major roadways and have at least some impact as to the traveling public. But I also think that uh, other art pieces of varying scale should be on or adjacent to the bridges for pedestrian use, for the multi-use path, for bicycling and, and uh, the general public in the downtown area. So uh, I could see two or three major pieces, but also maybe a handful of other smaller components that would be adjacent to some of the bridges and the structures along Salem Parkway. So that's, that's sort of my input at this time. That, that area that you're talking about, Greg, the high street, I'm looking on uh, Google Maps, that's, um, that's the off ramp before you get to what's the flower box tea, tea room. So like if you were exiting the highway, traveling east onto Marshall Street, is that where you mean the grassy area there? That's, that's correct. Okay. Greg, I think you made some good points. Do we have, I mean, I like to hear those kinds of specific ideas. I mean, that sort of gives us some indication that um, maybe there's some thinking um, that needs to be opened up about this project. And uh, I mean, part of the way to go about this is to really travel through the corridor and be very, very observant and take a lot of time to look at what's happening now and what's gonna happen in the future through the corridor, going both ways. Um, any, do we have any other, these have been really great comments. Any other comments from people on creative corridors or people in planning? <laughs> Love to hear what you're thinking because we somehow we've got a, take this stew and, and work with it, you know? <laughs> I think it's gonna be terrific, you know? And it's great to have uh, a, a lot of community involvement. We need to really focus on that and um, so we can get it right. I was hopeful that the, um, that the public art was included on 52, primarily because of the Happy Hill community that sits um, right um, um, 
excuse me, where the bridge is. Um, the, it looks like we will be doing something, sorry, with the shotgun houses and the <coughs> Cheryl, are you still there? Uh, her phone was ringing, so she's waiting for it to stop. <laughs> now, while we're waiting on Cheryl to come back, do we have a timeline that all of this needs to be completed by? That's a great question. Let me tell you the timeline that we're dealing with. So uh, we're under design now. Design, you know, current scope uh, includes uh, the design for uh, the supports needed for artwork. And uh, we need some guidance sooner than later from, from you guys, from Kelly and his team, and just really getting the guidance to our consultant to facilitate the design needs for Art, and we'll just we'll just cap it at that, whatever that may be. So the design elements, the set, the infrastructure, the lighting, if there's monument foundations to support structures, those type of things is what we have a design contract with Stemmel right now for. And uh, we're moving at an accelerated rate because, uh, as I mentioned, this is part of a much larger project that includes landscaping, lighting, a number of other things. So. Um, what we do need is some direction to give to the, our, our consultant. And it sounds like, as I mentioned, we've got more questions than answers. I imagine we need to bring this back once we once we get a little bit farther along. Um, so, uh, but again, we're trying to, to fit, wrap design up, but sometime this fall uh, into the, the into the winter months. So that's that's the schedule we're looking at. And so we need some answers quick. And that's about as much as I can give you right now. I'm sorry. Thank you. Everyone? Um, one of the purposes of, of narrowing this down, um, you know, from, you know, every, every bridge in the corridor to, to these is, um, you know, to kind of keep this project moving, we could really have a lot of potential to go into the weeds here with, you know, there's any number, you know, infinite possibilities for artwork along this corridor. Um, you know, if we can concentrate on, on a few areas, you know, if we can agree to try to book in the corridor or, um, you know, go, go with some areas that have, you know, really good sight lines from the road or really good sight lines from pedestrians downtown, you know, something like that, we could, that can, that can help narrow, narrow it down. Um, you know, we do have a lot of competition from streetlights um, and, you know, just the project, the project in general. So we know it's going to be a difficult ask to, to, to get this narrowed down, but, um, you know, that's probably going to be the most important thing to do uh, so that we can get to an RFP so that we can get some artist input. And you know, if we can if we can do that early, you know, it probably gives a little more flexibility to the project. You know, if an artist comes in with an idea that this group hasn't hasn't thought of, uh, you know, if the project isn't too far down the road, it could it, you know might be able to be considered. Uh, than if you know we wait too long and um, you know. Until, until the project timeline has moved on too, too far. Yeah, so I just want to piggyback off of what Kelly and Jeff have been saying. Uh, this is kind of a uh, exercise of which came first, the, the chicken or the egg. We don't have the sculptures yet to be placing them or to know what they look like at these locations, but yet at the same time, we don't want to dictate some places and have super dictate these places and have the people have to design within those parameters. So this this discussion that we've had today is great in being able to figure out um, to start to limit and start to narrow down where we where we want things and, and the discussions on 
having large scale at certain spots and even being able to now do smaller pedestrian level artwork, we can start to work that into uh, give the artists a little bit more feedback because we don't want to we don't want to limit what they can come up with. But at the same time, we don't want them. We can't give them complete reign of everything. So this is a, a fine line that you guys are helping us to toe here and start to narrow these areas down. Well, I think the one thing that I, I mean, I heard today is that scale is important. If you go with sculptures on Peters Creek Parkway, they're gonna have to be really big. And I really don't think they make any sense. Yeah, that's definitely the case. Um, and, you know, that's that's one of the reasons why why we narrowed it, narrowed the recommendation down so much was just because that is that's a big bridge uh, with you know sight lines coming coming from Broad Street, which is above it, uh, is a good sight line, and then coming in from from the west. Um, probably is too, I think, once you get under Fourth Street. And what's what's the anticipated budget again for the artwork? Uh, one one point four million. Are they contractually tied to a certain piece of art? You know, they, they use the word sculpture again. I mean, are we tied to a sculpture? Um, I'm not sure. I think it was, what is it, Business 40 Betterments? Does that sound right, Jeff? I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Betterments. And, you know, sculptures are, are vague. I understand that, Jason. I think that's the general intent. Um, just from the history of what we were, we have presented and been discussing a long time for some time. So but certainly that's why we're here. If that's, if that's the consensus, one thing I think we've got to be careful of is this, was what was shown as a part of our bond package too. So we, we, we put this out already to the general public who has, we've got support for what we're trying to do here. So I want to just, just throw that in for the record that, you know, this has already been vetted through once. Uh, it is because it was part of our bond package. You know, we are proposing art structures, artwork, um, and whatever capacity that may be, that's where we'll lean on you, but they were tied to really the bridges. Um, but again, that's why we're here. I believe it was it was Tim's point about the chicken and egg. Um, and I, I would just tie that to what uh, David said early on regarding uh, the artist input. Um, it, it does it does seem to me like we are at a place that typically we would have a committee. And I, I would imagine that would be uh, public art commissioners, um, representatives, you know, folks representing the bond package, potentially Creative Quarters Coalition that has done so much work to um, to build emphasis on enhancements and artistry in the city, um, it, and it, it does feel like it's this is a moment where having artistic input. I'm sorry, artistic in, uh, input would be really critical to this project, and also just making sure that the project is um, is reaching, you know not just those who are rushing through the city, but also like reaching the city, like the people of the city. Um, and and I, I don't know if that's part of what you're saying, David, when you point toward the multi-use path, when you point toward different kinds of users of the city, but um, certainly we would reach the largest number of people by having large visible monuments on the highway. But I don't know whether we're necessarily reaching you know, the whole breadth of the citizenry of the, of the city by doing that. I, I kind of, I like the, I, I know that there's the idea of the bookends. Someone somewhere came up with that idea and that word using those two bridges at either end. That was, that's kind of a cool idea, but let me propose another sort of gen, uh, general sort of conceptual framework because I think what we are going to need is a conceptual framework for this, okay? We can't just randomly assign these 
sculptures to the to the corridor. We have to really think about this. Another another way of looking at, at this that makes a lot of sense is to think about a narrative that travel uh, as we travel this corridor that goes along. What can we do with that idea of the changing time? Whether you're in a car, whether you're whether you're walking, whether you're running, what can we do? And what can we do in terms of variety of the artwork, not just things that are just structures that are very, very predictable in certain places. Let's take a look at this and be really innovative about it. Coming back to Cliff's idea about the arts and innovation. I know this is gonna take some time and spending $1.4 million is not something that we at the Public Art Commission has ever done or done fast. We, we really can, cannot do that fast. We should not do that fast. That, that's the point I would like to make is, I think we can work on this. We need to have a concept and we need to have buy-in for the concept, not just have it be one person or a small group that comes up with that idea. Something that's big enough for everyone. That's, that's, what, I, that's what I have to say. Well, um, one of the questions that I think you, uh, the, the term you talked about was conceptual framework. And I think, is it the responsibility of the project managers and the city DOT to come up with the general framework and for us to massage it from the framework? But I think we're spending time talking about massaging the actual concept. And I, th I think that's really where the actual artistry in and of itself, and I think that's really where is our role really that fundamental or is it really to respond to something that is generally understood as the goal of the project? And I think, I just think it would be better in my opinion if they came to us with a concept plan that is more developed and then we can respond to it. And I think they've got a good feeling of the concerns that we have, but it, I think we could kick it around forever without a conceptual framework. And I think it's their responsibility to come up with that narrative and that conceptual framework and not ours. I, um, I disagree somewhat because I think in a project at this scale that is a civic project, having um, folks who are deeply engaged with the concepts of art as early as possible in a project like this and in as sustained a way as possible on a project like this is what, I mean, it's a pain, it's time consuming, it, but to, to my mind, it is what leads to artwork that, that does transform a place um, and that has a, you know, a greater potential to do what great art can do. Um, and I don't know if that's always possible, but I think having those sustained engagements with the artistic thinkers can make a really big difference. Yeah, I'm not talking about, they, they just need to have something for us to respond to that, you know, for us to be open-ended talking about whether it should be lighting or whether it should be a monument, whether it should be on the, uh, the, the multi-use path. I just think that's almost impossible for us to be successful. And I just don't think they've come to us with a lot of details for us to really respond to. And I think it's, you know, a good portion of that $1.4 million is going to professional fees. And that's what they're, you know, that's my point. And they do need to talk to a lot of different people, particularly to get the artwork done right. And, but our job is to respond to their concept and then refine it from there, in my opinion. Well, um, I, I would say that it's it's very common for um, the commission to work with stakeholders who don't really have a very good idea or have some idea. We'd like to, for instance, make a monument to a certain person. Um, they we get called in to help conceptualize what how that can actually happen in a way that is more than just shopping for stuff, um, and that's our role is to provide that kind of guidance. That's, that's, what, that's the way we've been operating from the beginning. Um, our, our, the stakeholders and the people that come to us, um, whether it's a building or whether it's um, uh, any kind of um, uh, betterment or design, 
they may, they may not have, uh, they may have a very a, a sort of a cloudy idea and it's our job, I think, to help to help them, talking with them to um, make that into something that is where we can then translate that into an RFQ or an RFP. Um, so that's a, that's a big step to go from fuzziness to actually putting out a, a, a document. But that's what I think, and Kelly, I, it, maybe you could back me up, but that's what happens over and over again with us. Yeah, um, and you know, for a project this big, if you want to, you know, if you want them to be connected and not, you know, seven distinct pieces of art that don't relate to each other, you're gonna you're gonna want to do that do that up front, um, just so that, you know, it's not likely that it's gonna be one person or one team that does all does this whole project. So. There's going to be need to be some coordination between between them, which would be you know this group, um, and you know just to yeah you, know, you you'll you'll need to you'll need to know what you're coordinating early on to be able to do that. In in all essence, I think what you're saying, if I if I'm understanding correctly, is that you know we can have a preliminary conversation like this. Then they come back with a concept, and then they come back with a final, and that would be a good process for us. But I think, you know, we need to have input throughout, and we can have a committee that's assigned to it. Um, but I think, as a group, it's very hard for us to be the artist, to come up with the narrative, to um, come up with the designs. To and, I, and I'm not saying that that's what you're saying, but there's a limitation. They need to actually come forth after this conversation with a concept plan. And then we need to respond to that and see how they responded to our comments today. We can't, David, we can't hear you. I think, I think we've raised a lot of really good questions today. So Jason, I think you're right. I think, um, and I'd like to hear back from um, Tim and um, if, um, I don't know who else, who else is still uh, Jeffrey. Um, uh, hear what you um, what you've gotten from this conversation. I mean, we've brought up a lot of a lot of ideas, and some of them fit maybe rather neatly into what you were thinking, and maybe others don't. Um, and so. Getting a process going forward is something that I think we're all we all want to we all want to work on that, and I think we can. And I'll just say one more thing: is I I think that sometimes the the big concept kind of thing is something that is is not that hard to get to. It's it's actually the next step that's hard, and that is finding the is, is fleshing that out with um, with well defined um, RFQs and RFPs. Um, but I think that the concept can be um, based, for, for instance, I'll just say that basing it on the bridges versus basing it on the corridor. There is a big difference to me between bridges, the bridges as because they're really structurally oriented and the corridor, which is, a, is more like a river. So right there, you have a conceptual framework that I think we all need to think about and think about what, what the difference is and what that means. Um, and I would, I would urge, um, so I think we're, we're at the end of our time, aren't we, Kelly? For today? Yeah, I mean, we still have, still have a few things that I'd really like to get through, uh, but we can uh, certainly uh, report back with, um, you know, a refined recommendation, and I'd also encourage you all to, uh, Drive the drive the parkway and uh, walk those bridges, um, and we can we can send you the document with um, with those potential sculpture locations mm -hmm. if that'll help. Uh, since since it has the multi-use path uh, located on there, and it has different reasons why certain certain areas are are better than others. 
Kelly, this is Jeff. Uh, if I may just provide a couple of closing statements. I appreciate the good discussion for the group. One thing to note, I've um, heard a lot of discussion about, you know, what we need to provide and how we will present this moving forward. One thing I will call just for the record and to note that, you know, what we are presenting is, is, is consistent with what the creative corridors and it is a creative corridor guidelines that was produced for the corridor analysis of several key corridors in our city. And so all along the intent, even called for in the creative corridor guidelines is to enhance the enhancement of the bridges. And that was that's pretty clearly called out in a lot of language uh, that we were scoped um, and we presented for a number of years to provide. I don't think we've come to you today asking you to just throw darts at a wall. Um, uh, you, you noticed that the presentation was a lot around our recommendations consistent with what we see in the creative corridors and what we have been given as a direction through uh, city council and approvals um, through a number of uh, committees. So I think what we're trying to do is establish the framework and give you guys what we consider our scope. Um, it sounds like the interpretation of that uh, is open-ended. And I think what well, we need to have some discussion and I'm certainly willing to do that. Um, but, you know, as the point has been made several times, uh, you know, where does those lines draw? Because, uh, you know, we, we could go on a, a number of times, but again, this project is pointed to be consistent with what has been adopted as our creative corridor guidelines that will guide this project. And we're trying to be somewhat consistent because it does call for enhancement of bridges and in and, and the form of artwork and how we supplement that for MEP, for other use of surface streets, how we supplement that if, it does, if it's not a, a sculpture, if it's lighting or what, certainly we're open to that discussion, but I think what we've presented today is, is, is uh, certainly what we considered our base scope. So I just wanted to make that comment for the record. But it sounds like we've got a lot of homework. I tried to capture all the notes that, that were, were told you. I told you we'd have more questions than answered and answers, but that's why we're here. So we'll, uh, we'll do our homework and it sounds like we owe you a follow-up. Thank you all for your time. Thanks, Jeff. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Kimberly, Jeff, very much, Jim. And thanks to the Creative Corridor folks that have been here. Um, I'd like to hear more from them too. Um, I realize everybody, everybody kind of set, a, set aside an hour and a half and we're over that already, but um, we have another important uh, item on the agenda, which is the Benton Convention Center. Um, there's been some more uh, renovations happening at the Benton, namely at the uh, large ballroom that's under um, the embassy suites and the hallways and elevators and lobbies that, that connect those spaces. Uh, some of you were involved with the Benton um, artwork as one of the first couple projects for this commission. Um, and what we did was we had an RFP um, basically asked asked for artwork in in a number of different spaces, gave measurements, and then we kind of puzzled it in. Uh, we picked picked the best artwork um, that worked with our budget and uh, space needs. Um, so that's that's what we're being asked to do again, in addition to a portrait of. Big House Games, uh, another Winston-Salem State <laughs> coach uh, for for one area. So it would be, um, it ends up being three distinct projects, the portrait of Big House Games, uh, a hallway space and a lobby space. Um, and what I'm looking for today is uh, two or three volunteers to serve on that committee to help um, you know, put out that RFP and uh, choose choose those artists and artwork. And I realize we lost a few people here off the off the the call. And I'll I'll send out an email to to, to see if any of those other folks want to join. But if any of you would like to help with this project, oh, well. it promises yeah, to be a quick one. I yeah. can do that. Yeah. I, I could be part of that too. Jennifer, Claire, anybody else? Elizabeth, Jane, do you both want to do it? 
Okay. All right. That's, anyway, whichever that, you would like. Whichever I would like or. I know. or <laughs> Kelly, could I ask you to send out a list of who's on what committee currently? Because I'm starting to wonder how many committees I keep getting on. Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you want uh, if you want to jump off, if you feel overextended. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't actually remember at this point. It seems like I know I'm on one of them, but it's like you know. I just thought if we had a list, a running list, might be helpful of what sure. committees we're working on. <laughs> sure, I can send that. Up. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jennifer, Cliff, Elizabeth, and James, speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay. All right, that was all I had for that one. Um, do you like project reports real quick? Um, so the memory wall is... We'll see you Friday. Okay, thanks, Ralph. Have a good one. Memory wall is underway, um, and I'm just going to share a few a few pictures of the project. You can see the birds are installed again. They've kind of um, filled in these bowls with metal and um, kind of plaster and and put put rocks on them in a way that. Um, Goes goes with the uh, goes with the, the memory wall. And uh, discourages use of it as an ashtray. Uh, but probably the most important thing that they did was they washed it and it looks so much better just having been washed. You can see this is uh, you know, the progress being made. Wow. So it's looking good. Um, it'll probably, it might be done by the end of this week. Um, they're going to, there's still still a couple couple figures that need to be, need to be fixed. They're gonna be painting the, the gold back on. Um, and then they're going to be putting, um, an epoxy on it, which is going to take a while because <laughs> it's so porous and covered in uh, lots of materials. So, um, other projects: uh, downtown sculpture uh, on the corner of Fourth and Spruce. We're meeting with the artists and. Um, contractors on Thursday to kind of go over design revisions. Um, she's run into a lot of costs um, associated with this that are, that are higher than she anticipated. And um, it's, you know, so just something that, something that we'll be working at. Artistic bus shelters, um, you know, we've made progress recently, but it's kind of on the back burner just because there's so many other projects going on now. Um, and then COVID Memorial, this is one we were asking for county support on. Uh, we didn't get that county support in the current budget. It's possible it could fit into the um, recent uh, infusion of federal funds, but I'm told uh, the best way forward is to find a champion on the county commissioners for this project. Um, so I'll be asking the committee if anybody wants to reach out to any of the county commissioners to see um, if they can they can find that champion on the commission who who uh, would have some interest in the project. Betsy is going to work on that. Thank you, Betsy. Um, and that's all I have for project reports. Thank you, Kelly. Um, there's no public to public comment. 
Uh, yeah, I don't see anybody anybody here. Nobody left. With such a meeting, it's a two-hour meeting. That's like seeing a whole movie. Um, <laughs> back in the day. It's uh, a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> I know. We're finding that out, aren't we? <laughs> um, okay. Well, this is a good meeting. Um, do we have any other business? Uh, anybody else have any? comments i think we have we can see um what we're going to be doing um for a while here um thank you very all very much thanks for sticking with it and um we'll see uh, i will not be here next time so hopefully india will in the in the in-person meeting india will be um uh as vice chair will be presiding so um thanks very much we stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody. All right. Look forward to meeting in person. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Bye. Bye. Bye.